Good morning, good afternoon, where, whichever part of the world you're from. Um, my name is Thomas Ng, and uh, I'm from a company called Genetic Innovative Learning, and I'm here to share with you some of my thoughts regarding e-learning versus face-to-face -face training. The agenda is as follows. We'll first have a short brief about what is e-learning, the importance of e-learning, the gaps there are between face-to-face -face learning and e-learning today, how we bridge this gap, and lastly, I'm going to give a review, a review over about e-cornell. What is e-learning? I was not actually aware that this has been around since the 1960s, as described by uh, Apex. Uh, but for sure, they were there during the time of the first PCs. And I wonder how many of you actually remember the first commercial PC. Here it is. This one there. Uh, this is this was called the Apple, I think it was the Apple II. And you can see there's a signature there by Steve Wozniak, uh, the co-founder of Apple together with Steve Jobs. And um, eventually they had the Apple II, E2+. Plus, and... Um, I used these machines when they were first launched, and they used these things here called five and a quarter inch floppy disks. I'm sure many of you have never seen this before. And um, during that time, um, I actually learned how to use one of the second generation spreadsheets using what is called an interactive tutorial on one of these disks. And uh, that spreadsheet was actually, uh, second generation spreadsheet was actually called Multiplan. And I wonder how many of you remember or know what was the first generation spreadsheet. It is actually shown in this screen here. It's actually a program called VisiCalc. VisiCalc was the first spreadsheet uh, ever launched. Now, um, a short history about um, the evolution of e-learning. The uh, computer-based training platforms mentioned here uh, were basically what I mentioned uh, in the 80s. We used flexible uh, floppy disks and ran interactive tutorials. Uh, this platform extended well into the 1990s, but today I think they are largely extinct. Uh, what I would like to emphasize is that even during those times, this was called interactive. They claimed that this is an interactive tutorial. So today when People mention that their uh, e-learning program is interactive. You have to be careful about what it actually means. With the advent of the internet, the content of CBT was ported onto the web. But basically, this was the same thing except that we did not need to carry around those five and one quarter floppy disks, eventually the uh, three inch floppy disks. And that was replaced by CDs and then DVDs. Uh, but it was still a one-way delivery of training, and it is still learning in isolation. The only difference is that the content is now accessible on the internet, and I would like to call this e-learning 1.0 to distinguish to distinguish it from the e-learning that we have today. This is still around today, um, and I believe that uh, this will continue to be around as an instructional tool, and it serves certain purposes. Popular examples of e-learning 1.0, which we should know today and uh, is still being marketed um, quite aggressively today, would be Skillsoft and the Harvard Business Publishing Program, just to name a couple. There's nothing wrong with the content of these programs, but we need to recognize that they are purely access to online material and they result in learning and isolation, unless you, as the uh, consumer or the client, decide to add some blended learning into this environment. This is all your own initiative. Uh, so this kind of learning in isolation obviously has its setbacks, and we won't go into this here in this webinar. The sad thing is that most of the resistance towards e-learning today are the result of decision makers still being stuck on the mindset of CBT and e-learning 1.0. With the dawn of the new millennium, and you see it here, the web evolved into a communications platform. In fact, the interesting thing is that the computers in the 80s were largely used to, to uh, manipulate and manage data. Uh, but today, uh, the majority of computing power is actually used to communication. The most common indication of this phenomenon is the explosion of the social internet 
uh, social networking on the internet. Let me illustrate this expression with a minute and a half YouTube video. Please pay attention as the slides move pretty fast. So what does it so what does it all mean? I think it means that you need a total shift in mindset if you if you want to play catch up to what's going on in the world of learning and knowledge development. As you can see here, the arrows show that the CET model um, kind of progressed well in the 90s, whereas the e-learning 1.0 model evolved in the 1990s and are still around today. So e-learning 2.0, uh, what are the drivers of e-learning 2.0? What is important to recognize is that the difference between asynchronous and real-time tools, um, most of them can be both. It really depends on how we use them. Um, webinars, like the one we are having right now, can be live, as we are doing it now. Um, and there are many different webinar platforms that we can use, and they can deliver an, an experience which is not inferior to a physical classroom. Applauding raising hands and asking questions etc uh, doing surveys as well um, can be can be uh, realized with these webinar platforms the good thing about a webinar is that it is normally recorded and can be watched by people who for some reason or, uh, or another uh, time zones being one of them uh, are not able to attend the webinar in person so this then moves into a, a synchronous platform they can still ask questions and comment on the webinar using discussion boards, which are actually, which actually evolved out of blogging platforms. Today, they can be very sophisticated, categorize threads, links, content, etc. Discussion boards are asynchronous platforms, but most e-learning platforms would also have a live chat option. You can either chat with others who are online, arrange for others to be online at the same time for live chatting, or leave a chat message for a response later. So by doing so, we are switching between uh, a um, real-time and asynchronous uh, platform. Sounds like Facebook, doesn't it? Other real-time tools which can be integrated into an e-learning 2.0 platform are VOIP, which now today can stand for Voice Over Internet Protocol or Video Over Internet Protocol. All these facilitate what is today referred to as peer-to-peer -peer learning or collaborative learning. All studies show that some form of learning is much more effective, engaging, and retentive. Traditional learning retention rate can be as low as 5%, whereas collaborative learning can push this retention rate up to 80%. This is what studies show. Critical elements of 2.0 e-learning would be one, it has to be instructor-led. There, there are many different, sorry, there are many definitions which you'll find on the internet for e-learning 2.0. My definition within our context of edu executive education is that e-learning 2.1, 2.0 has to have the following elements. One is that it has to be instructor-led and a facilitated approach with a collaborative community of real people using state-of-the-art tools like discussion boards, chat rooms, VOIP, webcams, webinars, etc. And incorporating user-generated content to form a knowledge base. The platform and the classroom is virtual, but the participants are real. The resulting knowledge base can be very powerful. Imagine you do a tra training session on damage control with customers. You can then post the problem scenario and then have people from different departments, organizations, or even different countries comment and share experiences and solutions on the discussion board. You have captured a knowledge base which you can then keep and use. Next, we go into the other, the next topic on the agenda, the importance of e-learning. And I would like to stress that I'm talking about e-learning 2.0. Internally, you have to think as leaders in the organization or HR, as people, management, professionals in your organization. You have to think about the demographic profile of your people. How many of them are age 32 and younger? These are what we call the Generation Y or the Millennials. What do you know about them? What is their preferred learning style? You cannot assume that the learning style that you, your bosses, your CEOs, 
your VPs are used to uh, would be applicable to them. Um, how would they feel about CSR and carbon footprint? This is a matter which matters, this is something which matters to Generation Y, uh, more to Generation Y than their predecessors. And also think about what will be the demographic profile of the people in five years, ten years. You might say today that you have very few people in the organization who are age 32 and below, uh, but then think about the next five years or ten years. Generation Y, this description is already five years old. Since then, we have learned so much more about them, as with all things to do with technology today, the changes are rapid, exponential, and explosive. Can you believe, for example, that the iPad is less than two years old? Do you know that iPads are being used as pacifiers today? We have parents who give iPads to their one-year-old toddler to keep them quiet, to keep them occupied. I'm sure this description of Generation Y is not unfamiliar, as most of you, some of you will probably have children, like me, have children in this age. So given Generation Y and what we know about them, do you think this is how they will learn? It just that was the internal aspect of the importance of e-learning. Next, I'd like to touch on the external aspects. Today, how often do consumers rely on advertisements to make buying decisions? Logically, why should we listen to what companies tell us on the advertisement, right? I mean, why would companies say anything other than everything is good about what we do, what we produce and what we provide, buy it, right? So rather than listen to what people who deliver those products say, we should, the more reliable feedback would be word of mouth from consumers. So word of mouth in the past was pretty limited to the people you meet physically, but today word of mouth is accessible everywhere. It is called social media. Some years ago, I was presenting to a prominent fast food chain. No one in their management was keeping an eye on what was going on in the internet. I googled their brand name and the first hit was a video of their mascots humping each other. Some of you probably know who I'm talking about. The second hit was a customer complaining about the quality of the food encountered at one of the outlets. So, um, this company very quickly uh, put people onto the internet and watching, keeping an eye on the blogs and forums that are being posted about their brands. Uh, what are your, what about your future shareholders? Uh, what would they want to see in your web presence and how would they feel about CSR carbon footprints? Today, there is an increasing um, investment community that are looking for Invest, invest the companies which have a good CSR program and who are at the concept of 3P companies, people, planet, and profit. So it's not just about profit. Bottom line, I would say that your learning and development program and tools should be aligned towards your future leaders and it's equipping them to be effective in the rapidly evolving marketplace, thus making your business preferable, preferable to the stakeholders of the future. Next, the gap between face-to-face -face and e-learning. Now, is that really a gap? Is that really a key question uh, to compare face-to-face -face versus e-learning? Substantial research that supports the no significant, there is substantial research that supports the no significant different hypothesis. But research also supports face to face is superior. We need to look at the design of the course, suitability and motivation, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not very good. There is a US department, there is a study with the uh, education department of the US. In 2009, they arrived at the conclusion that even when used by itself, and this is the conclusion they have reached. Now, this was 2009. Think about how much has evolved in face-to-face -face learning since 2009. And compare that to what has evolved since 2009 with social media, social networking, the internet, and technology. 